fungi were the first organisms that came to land. 1.3 billion years ago, fungi marched on the land from the oceans. Plants followed several hundred million years later. Fungi are able to munch rocks because they pull out minerals uh, out of the rock matrix and they bind these minerals uh, into the mycelium. That's the first stages of soil generation. They were the gateway species and they led the way and in the trail of mycelium that they created and plant and animal communities then marched forward upon the mantle of mycelium. Hello, wise viewers, and welcome to Healthy Living. We just heard from Paul Stamets, a world-renowned American mycologist or botanist specializing in the study of fungi. Commonly known fungi include mushrooms, molds, mildew, and yeast. Mr. Stamets has written six books on fungi, including Mycelium Running, How Mushrooms Can Help Save the World, and for decades has studied the medical applications of fungi and their role in rehabilitating the environment. He firmly believes that fungi can protect the planet and should be promoted for use in permaculture or the design of human habitats and food production systems that mimic the relationships found in nature. Mr. Stamet's work is featured in Leonardo DiCaprio's documentary on environmental devastation called The Eleventh Hour. For his efforts, Mr. Stamets has been called a pioneer in the field of mycology. His research and innovative ideas have won him many awards, including the 1999 Founder of a New Northwest Award from the Pacific Rim Association of Resource Conservation and Development Councils. In 2008, Paul received the National Geographic Adventure Magazine's Green Novator and the Argosy Foundation's E-Achievement Awards. Paul Stamets was also named one of the 50 visionaries who are changing your world in the November-December 2008 issue of the Utney Reader, a bimonthly American news magazine. At present, Mr. Stamets is an advisor to the Program for Integrative Medicine at the University of Arizona College of Medicine, USA, and a member of the editorial board of the International Journal of Medicinal Mushrooms. Today's show features an interview with Paul Stamets in which he provides insights into the vital ways fungi help keep the health of all species in balance. Most people know that our best antibiotics have come from fungi, penicillin being the classic example. The story of penicillin is very interesting. In 1942, um, it was discovered a novel strain of, of, of the mold that produces penicillin called Pen Penicillium chrysogenum. Actually, a lady in Chicago named Moldy Mary, she went out and found a cantaloupe, brought the cantaloupe back into a, a laboratory, and from her cantaloupe came a strain of Penicillium chrysogenum that produced 200 times more penicillin than any other strain in the world that was known at the time. Penicillin is only one example of how humans and other species are helped by fungi. Mr. Stamets next discusses the importance of the mycelium or vegetative part of fungi. The mycelium is producing lots of antibacterial and antiviral compounds. And as the mycelium goes through an ecosystem, it sets up the microbial populations that benefits the mycelium, that benefits the plants and the animals within the ecosystem. When an ecosystem is being uh, destroyed or harmed or injured, then you have a proliferation of disease that then leaps out of the landscape and typically infects animals. And so zoonotic diseases are, are diseases that come from animals that infect humans. Now avian flu is a classic example, H5N1. But let's go back in time uh, to a few years ago uh, to SARS. There is a continuous food chain that can spread viruses from one organism to another. One of the biggest threats that we face in the world today is a pandemic flu uh, uh, from avian uh, sources. And so this is the, the scary scenario that most virologists are extremely concerned about. A human will infect a, a pig and a bird will infect a pig, both with flu viruses. In the pig, 
then the flu viruses can recombine, and that pig then can have a novel virus that will spread human to human. Now, the avian flu pandemic of 1918, it was a bird flu, H1N1, only 2% of the people uh, who were infected died. But of the people who did die, more than 90% are thought to have died from staph infections, a bacterium. So first the virus scarred their lungs, and then they died from staph. Virus comes first, bacterial pneumonia comes second. So with the avian flu H5N1, the fatality rate is between 60% to 100%, far greater than that of the 1918 pandemic uh, flu virus. So this is a problem with the concentration of people and animals and the ecosystem falling apart is that it's likely, it's not just likely, it's extremely probable that pandemic flu will go human to human in the next 10 years. This is the biggest threat to biosecurity of nations throughout the entire world. One of Paul Stamet's significant research projects seeks to use fungi to produce antimicrobial drugs to deal with these pandemic diseases. When we return, Mr. Stamets will discuss his latest work in this area. You are watching Healthy Living on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Healthy Living on Supreme Master Television. On this episode, the esteemed American mycologist Paul Stamets shares his knowledge about how fungi benefit the health of humankind and other species. My research has shown that certain fungi, especially some mushroom species growing in the old growth forest, are extremely active against tuberculosis and flu viruses. And I discovered this mushroom called agaricon, which grows exclusively in the old growth forest, that's highly active against smallpox, which is a virus, um, and also flu viruses, and, as well as tuberculosis, as well as staph bacteria and E. coli. So to find a fungus that is duly active against viruses and bacteria is medically unique. To find a fungus that has a 2,000 year history of human consumption, you know, uh, means that it's been already tested through time to be non-toxic. So we may have discovered a new class of antimicrobial drugs. It's all the more reason that we need to protect our ecosystems. If we lose that ecosystem, the old growth forest, we may lose something that could save hundreds of millions of lives. This is the importance of maintaining these ecosystems. As we lose the indigenous fungi, we are losing the medicines of the future that will protect future generations. And so I constantly feel the voices of our descendants calling back from the future, telling us to wake up, get our act together. Every minute that we spend on this, we could be sending, saving us uh, thousands of lives. Mr. Samets also expressed serious concerns about the negative effects of factory farms on human health. One of the issues of factory farms that's a huge threat is you have a hyper concentration of animals. That's not normal. And they're penned in, and the hygiene is terrible. They use antibiotics. Well, the antibiotics then so have a natural selection force on selecting strains that are antibiotic resistant. And so you end up creating new virulent antibiotic resistant strains in factory farms that they can leap off. I was driving through Oklahoma and there was no less than five miles along the freeway of factory farms with mountains of manure 100 feet high. And under those circumstances, that is a perfect epicenter for a natural disease to leap out. The threat to the worldwide population from factory farms is totally underestimated. We should not have hyperaccumulation. And this also speaks to a lot of other issues that relate to overpopulation. Humans are animals as well. Humans living in concentrated cities that are highly polluted, that can also create a new disease vectors. To avoid such consequences, Mr. Stamets calls on people to adopt sustainable, environmentally friendly lifestyles to repair the ecosystem, thus allowing fungi to thrive and perform one of their primary functions in nature, disease prevention. 
We need to change the economic and ecological paradigm. We, not, we must stop buying fertilizers. We must not invest in the petrochemical industry. We need to invest literally in our backyard. People should be composting. They should be growing their own food. They should be eating local foods as opposed to getting foods uh, from outside of the country. Every country should have a country of origin labels. People should be buying food that are indigenous within their ecosystem for all sorts of very, very interesting reasons. There are microorganisms that are present within our food chains locally that prevent us from getting diseases that could be coming from within our ecosystem. Mr. Stamets further explains how eating locally benefits public health. When we're getting foods from afar, we're not benefiting from the natural microflora that's present within our ecosystem. So we don't have our immune, uh, immune defense. A, a central concept of this is called host defense. We need to potentiate our host defensive resistance so we don't have to artificially create defenses using antibiotics and using uh, you know, uh, fertilizers or toxic solutions when we can invest in natural solutions. The ecosystem has developed a, a wonderful equilibrium at keeping things in the balance. We need to reinvest into that equilibrium locally. We do that locally, we do that regionally, it will happen globally. And that is the, the path that we should follow. And if we don't follow that path, we are on the path currently of, of falling down a slippery slope that will end up in, in a massive extinction of life on this planet. And this is something that I'm extremely concerned about. You know, as we fail, so many other biological systems will fail. But from this decomposition of these failing uh, uh, old paradigms, we will be rebirthed into a new, new paradigm. So we may be the casualties of our, of our own activities, but ultimately, I think the Earth's biosphere will survive. It'll survive without us, as opposed to with us. We have the vote now that we can cast. Do we want to be part of the ecosystem or apart from the ecosystem? If we're going to be apart from the ecosystem, then we're voting for our own extinction. If we want to be part of the ecosystem, we're voting to be a member of the ecological community and respecting other life forms, and that's what we need to do. We are grateful to Paul Stamets for sharing with us his vast knowledge of fungi. And we also thank you for your kind company on today's episode of Healthy Living featuring the benefits of fungi to human health. Please stay with us for enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May well-being and peace of mind be yours always.